Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we will continue configuring the Forcepoint Web Security Cloud solution. We will discuss, install, and configure the directory synchronization client tool that is used to sync your users, groups, and email addresses with the Forcepoint Cloud service. At the end, we will assign the newly synced users and groups to an existing policy. If you have any questions during this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Enjoy! The directory synchronization client, otherwise known as the DirSync client, collects user directory information from one or more directory servers for use by the Forcepoint Cloud service. The DirSync client supports on-premise LDAP-based directories such as Microsoft Active Directory and IBM Domino, as well as cloud-based services such as Microsoft Azure and Google Apps. The first thing that we must do is create an account that will be used by the DirSync client to communicate with the Forcepoint Cloud service. To create this account, we need to navigate to Account Contacts. On this page, we will select the Add button on the bottom left. This will take us to the Add Contact page where we need to input the details about this account. The only thing that we need for this account is a first and last name. Here, we will input DirSync as the first name and client as the last name. Once we hit Submit, we'll be on the Contact Details page where we will need to configure the username and email address. So let's click here to configure this. Input the username and email address that will be used for this account. I am going to use the first and last name as the username and the same for the email address. Then I will click Generate Password. Make sure to copy this password somewhere for safekeeping. Next, we are going to modify the permissions of this account. Let's disable all of the permissions that are currently enabled. Once this is done, let's enable the directory synchronization option under the account permissions section. After you've done this, click save in the bottom left. Now that we have created the account that we will use for the DirSync client, let's download the client. Navigate over to the account directory synchronization page. On this page, you will see the download links under the Download Directory Sync Client section. In this video, we are installing the DirSync client onto a 64-bit Windows machine, so we will need to download the 64-bit version of the client. You will see under the Directory Synchronization Settings section that the option Enable Directory Synchronization is not enabled. Let's go ahead and click the Edit button so we can enable that. We are taken to a new page where we can see the DirSync option. Enable the directory synchronization checkbox, but leave the override groups disabled for now. Under the web section, you can see that we need to configure the policy that will be assigned to users who are not assigned to another policy. This should be your default policy or your equivalent policy. The next option for user policy assignment can be configured to fixed, meaning that you set it once and regardless of the group policy assignment, the policy will not change. Or follow group membership which will assign the policy based on the policy that is assigned to that group. I recommend using the follow group membership option, but this is up to you. The next option is the email new users. This is going to send a notification to your users whenever they are first synced with the Forcepoint Cloud service. You can configure what the notification says and the email address that it's sent from. Once you've finished configuring this, click save in the bottom left. Now that we have downloaded and configured the DirSync client, let's go ahead and install it. So let's open up your downloads where the DirSync client was saved. Copy this file and move it over to the server that you would like to host the service. In my lab environment, I am installing it on the domain controller itself, but you could install it on another server that has domain access. Once we have moved the client over to the server, let's go ahead and run it. Confirm the license agreement, the installation directory, and the start menu shortcut. The next screen after this is the Office 365 module. If you are using Microsoft Azure AD, then you will want to select the checkbox to include this integration. The same is true on the next screen regarding Google Apps. Select the checkbox if you are using this service. Click Next and wait for the install to finish. Next, we will configure the DirSync client itself. Go to Start and type in DIR. Look for the DirSync Client option in the results and select this. This will run the client and open the configuration window. Here you will see the button for new configuration. Click this. On the Sync Client configuration window, you will need to input the configuration name, which can be whatever you would like. Under the synchronizations, you will see the dropdown for synchronization type. Here we will select the groups option. On the next screen, we will see the source type, which we will select Microsoft Active Directory because I am using an on-premise AD. Select the type that is appropriate for your environment. 
The next screen will have you configure the hostname or IP address of the domain controller that the client needs to connect to. Here you will define the port, which by default is 389, the authentication method, username, and password. The user's name should be in the format of domain slash username, and remember that this account needs to have enough permissions to access the user and group information about your domain users. Here I am using the domain administrator in my environment to ensure that it has the correct permissions. For more information regarding the account permissions, please refer to the article titled Forcepoint Directory Synchronization Client Admin Guide below. Once you have configured the credentials, the next screen will be the LDAP search configuration. This will be where we configure the search base. Here I'm going to input my domain in the form of dc equals marvel, comma, dc equal com. This will configure the client to sync my entire domain. You can change the options on this page if you do not want to sync the entire domain. Please refer to the DirSync admin guide if you need more information about this. After the LDAP search configuration, we move on to the test screen, which will show you the results of the query. If the test shows an error or doesn't pull any results, confirm that you have put in the credentials correctly. Next is the groups, which is where you will set which groups you want to be synced with the cloud solution. Here is where you can control which users get synced with the cloud. I only have two main groups in my lab environment, so I am only going to select these two groups. Once you have made this selection, click next and we'll move on to the data repository. The data repository page is where we will configure the portal type to use the cloud service. Then on the hosted service portal configuration screen, we will select the checkbox for custom account details for this synchronization. This is where we will input the username and password of the DirSync account that we made earlier. Let's go ahead and input the email address and the password, then click next. The filter and threshold limits page allows you more control over which users and groups you want to sync. I don't have anything that I need to filter out, so I will move on through this screen, but if you need more information on this, refer to the DirSync admin guide. The notification page is where we will be able to configure an admin email address that will be notified whenever the directory synchronization has occurred. Lastly, we are on the summary page, which is just a summary of the configurations that we just went through. There is a verify button to test the sync here that we will select. Once you have done this, click save at the bottom. The next screen will ask us if we want to add another configuration, which we do. We will then repeat the same steps for the user sync. Once you are done with the user sync, go through the configuration one last time with the mail sync. The mail sync is not required for a web security cloud only customer, but I will go through this sync because I have the email security solution as well. The one main difference during the configuration of the mail sync is that you will need to change the LDAP filter. On the LDAP search page, you need to select the search filter edit button. Then you will need to change the mail nickname value to mail. This will select the appropriate field from your Active Directory to pull the user's email addresses. Then finish this configuration as normal. Once you have configured all three, users, groups, email addresses, you need to perform the sync. To do this, click the Test Update button. This will show you what is actually going to sync. And then once this is done, click the update button to perform the actual sync. If the sync fails, then look in the Forcepoint Cloud Portal on the account directory synchronization page where we can see the recent synchronization section at the bottom. This will show you any errors related to the sync. If you see errors, then I would recommend going and clearing those up. The most common error is the duplicate email address error. So if you have duplicate email addresses, you will need to go and remove those or not sync those specific users.
Now that you have configured the DirSync client, it will run automatically and update the cloud whenever your Active Directory updates users. The last thing we will do once we have the DirSync client configured is assign some users and groups to our policy. In the Forcepoint Cloud Portal, let's navigate back over to Web Policy Management Policies. Open up one of your policies and navigate to the End Users tab. You should now see the Directory Synchronization section at the bottom where you can assign users and groups to the policy. Thanks for watching this video where we were able to configure the Forcepoint Web Security Cloud Solution Directory Synchronization Client. We discussed, installed, and configured the Directory Synchronization Client that is used to sync your users, groups, and email addresses with the Forcepoint Cloud Service. Then we were able to assign some of these users and groups to an existing policy. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below or reach out to your account manager for more assistance. If you would like to see more of these videos, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to be alerted when more videos are posted. See you next time.